Welcome to the very first episode of Pillow Talk. Mind the wobbly camera, Milo just came in to say hello to me. Um, so it's morning time and I decided that I wanted to film this video before I got up and since it was Pillow Talk, I thought why not film in my pyjamas? I've got my cup of tea in my brand new mug from my friend Kaz. She bought me this back from Disney World and it's my favourite possession. Um, I've got my pyjamas, these were also a Christmas present from Lee. Um, I like was obsessed with these pyjamas but wouldn't buy them because they were crazy expensive. So they're pretty much the best present anyone's ever bought me, you know, along with the gift of the mug from my friend. Um, and yeah, so here we are. Oh, also I'm wearing my eye patches because this needed to happen. I don't know about you, but since Christmas, and it's, it's like a long time since Christmas now, but since the Christmas break, I can't get myself on a schedule of sleeping properly. So I'm staying up till like one, two o'clock in the morning, and then I'm waking up absolutely exhausted. So my friend's coming around in about half an hour, an hour. This needed to happen. Also, this needed to happen quickly, because half an hour, an hour is not a long time. So, for those of you who've been following me for a long time, um, you may remember my Kyla Talk series, which was on another channel. Basically, it was me or me and a group of people talking about certain topics. Now, I can't really remember 100% why I stopped filming that, whether I had run out of things that I wanted to talk about or what it was, but I think, I suspect, part of the reason was um, that when you talk about topics, you give out your opinions, it kind of invites and attracts uh, some negativity. And I just got a hair that just will not leave me alone. I don't know, I don't really remember what it was, but this is kind of what I suspect, because with having an opinion, comes a little bit of controversy. Even if it's like an opinion most people share, there will be some people that don't and they want to kind of come at you with their conflicting opinions. Now, this this particular topic is not really something I think we're gonna get a lot of that with, but I do want to kind of preface the whole series by saying, if you enter into a discussion already having made up your mind, then you're not really discussing anything. You're just telling people what you think and you're expecting them to agree with you. That's not where I'm coming from at all. On the topics we talk about in the future, I'm always open to be influenced in some way or educated on that topic so that my perspective may change by the end of the discussion. Today's topic um, is not really something I think is going to be super controversial, but we'll see. It is self-help and why I love self-help. For the longest time, um, self-help has been kind of like a dirty word, a dirty phrase. He's just not that into you kind of vibe. Do you know what I mean? Like that whole, we will help you because you are weak and helpless. And I think it's been something that people didn't want to talk about for years and years. And then it's had this revival in recent time that millennials have totally like latched onto because we, and I am one such millennial, we want motivation, we lack motivation, we lack that kind of all-American self-belief in ourselves and that is a stereotype I know but hopefully I'm using it in the positive um, and also a lot of the books that I'm listening to are all-American books, they are like you can do it, dream a dream and it will come true. I love that kind of book. Now that's not going to be for everyone and I'm going to kind of brush over that kind of self-help because there are loads of books like that, you know The Secret, um, that you can either be really into or just think is complete baloney and I'm kind of somewhere in between. But you can take self-help from absolutely anywhere. And I think there'll be some people who will watch this video or who won't, but will kind of hear about self-help. And they would be shocked at how often they've indulged in self-help without even realizing it. For example, one of my favorite, favorite things is reality TV. Um, and Lee and I watch this together now. Our favorite show is Real Housewives of New York. If you watch this show, some of this will now become clear. If not, hopefully it's still easy to understand. So all the way through the season, you're watching these women and how they interact with each other. And at the end of the show, they have kind of what I consider to be a bit of a therapy session. It's called a reunion, but they sit down and they have to talk through all of the issues that they'd had throughout the season. And they have an independent, a judge, adjudicator, or whatever, a therapist in Andy Cohen, who kind of like keeps the peace and probes a little bit further when we need to talk about extra things. And at that point, you kind of sit down and you go, right, well, I was on this person's side or I'm on this person's side, but look how they behaved and look how they did this. And for me, I've learned so much by observing behavior on reality TV that I like or don't like and implementing that or removing that from my own personality. I know how annoying I am. Like I am, we'll be watching something and Lee will say like, well, early, early on, there was Jill and there's still Ramona and they are very, 
kind of obnoxious and loud, annoying characters. I am those people, maybe not 100%, but I have definitely got Ramona in me. And it just makes me think, right, well, she's doing this and I, I know I do that and I don't like that in her. So I need to consciously decide not to do that in myself. And that is self-help. That is self-help. It's not self-help as you know it. It's not traditional self-help. It's not come from a book, but it is self-help and it works in films, it works in TV shows, anything that you are taking in, regular novels, relationships, you are observing the way that people are interacting with other people and um, you are deciding whether or not you like that or not. And whether it's conscious or not, you are also, your, your behavior will be affected by everything that you take in. Um, even if it's not TV, you know, it could just be like observing other people's relationships in your life. It could be your parents' relationship, it could be a friend's relationship, it could be two friends that are arguing and you're like, okay, well, I don't like how she dealt with that. You are taking all of that in and it is forming you as a person. So I really, really enjoy self-help in any form that you can get it. Um, and I think that most people are taking it in whether they realize it or not. Again, moving away from the traditional self-help, some of my favorite self-help books are coyly dubbed autobiographies. Now everybody knows it's a self-help book, but I think some of the best lessons come from other people's mistakes. Learning about other people's lives and what's led them to a certain point to succeed or fail. Um, you can learn so much from that, so much more from that than someone just telling you to get up out of bed an hour early in the morning and put together things that you want in your life. I really, really enjoy hearing other people's kind of trials and tribulations and this happened to me and this is how I dealt with it. Um, and someone who has really had a lot of time and distance between those events and now that's sat and decided to kind of really think about it and write it down. They've really, they've had time to kind of process whether or not that was the right thing, what they should have done, and they can share all of that with their readers at the time. I just, I really love an autobiography and they're probably what I've read most of this year, but I still consider them to be self-help um, because you are, it's a passive self-help because you are passively learning lessons about life from other people's stories about their own life. So I think if you are into this general concept, but you don't want to head straight into the motivational direct self-help, I would highly recommend you start listening to autobiographies because I find them to be amazing and they don't feel as like in your face preachy as Miracle Morning, The Secret, etc. For those of you who are interested, I'm gonna have like a list on the screen right now, but also I'm gonna have a blog post which is linked below, just kind of like summarizing what I've talked about, but also, but also, I just repeated myself throughout this video, I knew. Um, I'm gonna have a list of all of the books that I've read or all the books I would recommend listened to, not read, this year. Um, and ones that I've listened to multiple times as well because they are, I just go back to them time and time again. A lot of it will have to do with the person that's reading it um, because I really enjoy them and their style but a lot of it also is like I'm going back for a certain lesson um, and I really enjoyed a particular chapter so I'll listen to the whole book again. One particular one I really, really enjoyed this year was The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes who uh, writes Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, Private Practice, How to Get Away with Murder, is there another one? I can't remember. Um, but I really enjoyed her. She was basically saying that for a long time she would say that she wouldn't attend events, she wouldn't do things, and all of a sudden she started saying yes to everything, and the opportunities grew and everything was just amazing. So for me, in my position, um, that was really, really motivational because I felt like I was doing a lot of what she was doing, and that her life basically opened up once she started saying yes instead of no. And she was in a very similar kind of life, not really, because you know, she's a Hollywood star, but she was in a similar life position with like small children and stuff as well. So I could take a lot, there was a lot of re relatable stuff in there for me. But there'll be a lot of autobiographies uh, from people who are in a similar lifestyle to you and they are the ones you should seek out. Um, now, if you have any that you have listened to, autobiographies or actual direct self-help, please leave them in the comments of anything that you would like to recommend because I'm always into more of this. But I wanted to just start off the new year. I know we're like midway through now, but start off the new year, not midway through the new year, but January. Start off the new year by sharing something that really helped me last year, especially because I was having a bit of a hard time and it wasn't the best year for me. Um, these books just were a bit of an escapism and it also kind of, when people talk through their lives and say, you know, I had these hard times and I'm here now, um, that can be really 
helpful when you need that, when you need someone to say, you know, actually everything's gonna be okay because these things happened to me and everything came out okay. Um, and when you're having a really hard time, it really, it, it's kind of sometimes all you need. It's one thing for a friend to say everything's gonna be okay, but it's better to hear from someone who's been through it that um, actually, yeah, it, it could all be cool. So hopefully this will be useful for some of you. Hopefully I'm introducing something brand new to some of you for 2018. Um, but like I say, leave your own recommendations in the comments and I will see you guys on Monday with another video.